to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Even among the soils that produced, they produced some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some a hundredfold. So even for those who got the results, they got it in different degrees. Hallelujah. And it's my prayer in the name of Jesus that this would be hearts that produce a hundredfold return. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. The brief session that we have tonight will be a charge to bless our hearts and then I just sense in my spirit that somewhere in this meeting we'll have the opportunity to just pray and speak over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ verse 35 and the same day when the even was come he said unto them Jesus is speaking. Let us pass over to the other side. This is Jesus now. A desire to advance. A desire to move to the next level of his ministry. And he encouraged his disciples with him and said, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, 36 now, they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships then a tragedy happened and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said, unto one another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him hallelujah now the bible is giving us a very interesting scenario here jesus is on his way to the other side and all of a sudden the bible says as they were going there rose a great storm of wind now storms are made up of two components one is visible, one is invisible. Please follow me carefully. Every storm is made up of water and wind. You are able to see the water and see it boisterous, but that water is empowered by wind that you may not be able to see. And that the storm arose on account of their desire for advancement. If they did not desire to move forward, there would be no need for any issue of a storm. It's amazing that many things that happen to us are not proofs that we are retrogressing. In fact, they are proofs that we are moving forward. The storm came because there was motion to move to the other side. There are many people who do not have storms in their lives and you think they are free. Is proof they are not going anywhere. Is proof they are not doing anything. They would have settled back and just resorted to remaining there and there would be no issue of storm. 
But the storm arose because they took the risk to go by sea to the other side. Are we together now? Many believers need to have a reorientation about what we call challenges and problems. Because sometimes the narrative we have about challenges is that um, the reason why the devil attempts to attack me is simply because I may not be a Christian or my faith. You know, we have this narrative. The moment you see people trusting God and having to push through storms, the usual narrative is that they do not have faith. And here is the Bible correcting our perception that Jesus, your Jesus, is on his way to the other side so that a Decapolis will be healed. A Decapolis will be saved. Remember, as you will be learning, that the storm was not about Jesus. The storm was not even about the disciples. The storm was about the destiny of 10 cities. So that the attack that many times we face is not about us. You are too small a motivation for the devil to just invest his energy. In the, there is a bigger cause. Are we together now? There arose a storm of wind. Suddenly, a situation that was at ease became boisterous because the Savior was on his way to save a madman who would bring 10 cities. The whole story was not about Jesus. It was not even about the disciples. You would think they did something wrong. But there were spirits. Listen carefully. Do you know that when they went over to the other side, the first person they met was the demoniac who told the demon Jesus was coming. The spirits that controlled that territory, the gatherings, that had kept that man in bondage and kept the city in bondage. The economy of that city was dependent on their fraternity with those spirits. That was why the moment the spirit went, their economy also went down. Look at everything that happened just because Jesus arrived there. Are we together? Then the Bible said that a storm of wind, very boisterous, the water began to come into the boat and the disciples were afraid. And they went and met Jesus sleeping. And they woke him and said, Master, wake up, we're in trouble. You are the one who brought us in this trouble. Take responsibility for the situation we are in. Isn't it amazing that sometimes when you get midway between your journey, you, you get angry, you look back at those who motivated you, your pastor who prayed for you, the word he gave you, you are angry. If you did not motivate me, I will not get into this marriage. If you didn't motivate me, I wouldn't get into this business. I was minding my business. You came in with a word that made me uncomfortable with my situation. It's amazing that when we face challenges, we usually look for who to blame. And in this case, they found Jesus. They attempted to manage the storm. And when they found out they did not have the ability to manage the storm, they went to Jesus. They didn't say, Jesus, save us. They said, carest thou not. So they are, they are rebuking Jesus here. Carest thou not that we perish. Pastor, are you aware that I'm looking for one billion naira? I came to you and I showed you a dream. And you told me God said 2021 is my year of advancement that I should move. Now I've started a project and midway there doesn't seem to be any help. I was, I was all right. Listen to me. Storms are very, very important tests in the life of believers. Now I know that this may not be a very popular teaching. But I'm showing you how people move from where they are. In fact, if you are truly making progress, you can validate your movement by the presence of storms. If your advancement does not send a signal enough to call the attention of the gate of hell to say, who is this making this progress? Many times, our ease is proof that we are not making progress. If you sit at home and you do not Get in your car to go from one place to the other. You have no business with traffic. People experience traffic because they are moving. They, while the traffic is on, there are onlookers who are just watching. They are not doing anything necessarily. 
there arose a boisterous storm. Now, please watch this. There is a lesson to learn here. I'm dealing with the issue of the storm. That every storm is made up of two elements. Number one, the wind. And number two, water. Are we together now? Yes. The water is the obvious one that you can see. But that that water is being powered by wind that you cannot see. Behind every physical problem, look up please. Behind every physical challenge, hear me. There are spirits and spiritual forces that empower them. Behind situations and circumstances that seem to defy solutions. There are spiritual forces that empower situations, empower men, empower conditions to be hostile against those who are making progress in this kingdom. So if your interpretation of challenges is just the individuals, the physical actors, you've gotten it wrong. Jesus knew that there was more than water. His concern was not even the water. When he was about to rebuke it, he said, peace be still. He was not just speaking to the water. He was speaking to the spirits that were manipulating the wind to make the water boisterous. Behind every challenge, there are spirits that are behind it. The same way behind every progress and exploit, the Holy Ghost is also behind it. People do not just make progress because they are well intentioned. It takes an agency of the spirit to move people. Are we together now? This is very, very important. Paul, it was Apostle Paul who said, I desired once and again to come to you. I desire to move from this location to come and be a blessing to you. He said, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still in the business of attempting to hinder men. Hinder men from stepping into strategic relationships. Hinder men from stepping into strategic alliances. Opening them up to opportunities that can lift them. And here comes the manifestation of spirits. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare over someone tonight. That every force that stands your way here at this conference. In the name of Jesus, may it be silenced forever. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? That is when you make up your mind and say, the name of Jesus, I will be a giver like never before. It's time to move to the other side. Suddenly, things begin to happen and you're finding out that your children are getting mysteriously sick and all this is happening and people are calling from home and say, care us not. You see it now. And whilst that is happening, you're saying, Lord, but I made a commitment to love you and serve you. Just when you make up your mind that I will be a faithful worker, I'm going to give my best to God, my best to this church, suddenly situations begin to arise. Learn to read the writings on the wall. It is not about you. It's about where you are going. When you focus on yourself, you will be misled. The devil looks broad and he knows that if this woman becomes a CEO, I know how many believers will be employed in this company. If this woman becomes a CEO, I know. So the moment he was there in the board meeting while they were discussing you and the moment your name came, he said, no, this woman calls upon the name of the Lord. We know the implication of her lifting. Suddenly a storm arises. Be careful when you talk about people who are going through things. It's not necessarily about them. Many times it's about where they are going. It's about a salvation that you may even be part of. Sir, why are you suddenly in trouble? Why is your company seeming to know stuff? You've always been an intelligent fellow. I know you as a skilled person. What is this disfavor all around your life? It's a storm. Are we blessed? Just when they're about to give you an, an appointment that will put you in a position where people will model your life, your children begin to go haywire. Where is this coming from? Learn to interpret the writings on the wall. Many of the attacks in our lives, I tell you, they are not about us. It is about something that is bigger than you. 
Have you not noticed that when seasons are about to change, it looks like you, you almost know that a season has come to an end and another one is about to start because strange from, it, it looks like there are attacks from nowhere. All of a sudden, your car doesn't seem to work. Everything seems to annoy you. Just when you want to give God praise, your child comes with a report, a result, an evil report. You hold that result and look at it and say, what is this? Have I wasted my money? Then you suddenly begin to feel a pain somewhere and say, in the name of Jesus, I, and, and it looks like you are overwhelmed. And sometimes you can turn to God and say, carest thou not. Is that not what we say? Don't blame the disciples. Carest thou not. God, I have served you. I'm faithful. My seeds are speaking in the house of God. Why are you asleep allowing me to go through these things? Why are you asleep allowing my children to go haywire? Why are you asleep allowing my life to not make progress? What is it about a job that you cannot give me, oh God? What is it about lifting that you cannot give me? And yet Jesus is lying down quietly. It's amazing. They were not interested in his presence. They were interested in his speaking. Because he was there. You would think they would have been comforted that his presence was there with them. <laughs> they said, Jesus, it's not your presence that we are looking for. Wake up. You are here, but wake up. We need you to wake up and do something. Do something that our senses can relate with. And Jesus said, if the boat turns, will it not turn with me too? Why don't you keep quiet and watch what my power can do? The first thing he rebuked was their faith. He said, there is something about my presence you do not know. You want me to relate in a way that your mind and your senses can find comfort in. Draw strength from the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Ah, someone prophesy to yourself that in the midst of my situations, Jesus is still in the boat. I know my home looks like it's in disarray. November, December seemed like nothing would happen, but Jesus is still in that boat. Keep talking while he's in my boat. My security is that even if I don't hear his voice, his presence is still with me. He may not always speak, but I find comfort in the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Please sit down. There are many times when he's with you, but may not speak. But the carnal man does not understand the power of divine presence. You would want to hear him so that you will find comfort. And Jesus said, Learn this, your faith, your conviction. I am not a man. I am the almighty the master over storms. If I am in your boat, no matter how it is rocking, find rest. They were angry that Jesus was at rest. They expected him to panic like them. Isn't it amazing how, how you find out that when people are at rest, sometimes it annoys you because you can't understand what is the basis of that rest. Are you not aware that there is a pandemic? Are you not aware that people's jobs, it looks like they are going to downsize? Where is your panic? Let's be humans together. And someone tells you, I have found rest. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This is the basis of my rest. And sometimes the rest of faith can annoy faithless people. We're discussing storms. Jesus is asleep. He's in that boat. The word of God, the logos of God, that created the wind, that created the rain, created the sea, and now he's asleep. And because he's not speaking, Listen, every time God is silent, learn to discern the voice of silence. There is silence itself is a language. There is something God is saying. The moment God keeps quiet, find rest. He's telling you, I am well aware. But the carnal man would always want God, say something to me and he's quiet. Lord, speak about my job and he's quiet. Speak about my family. He's quiet. Speak about the next level. He's quiet. Carest thou not. Lord, carest thou not. 
Are you not aware that I need to pay my rent? Are you not aware that I just lost my job? My integrity serving you is what has brought this tragedy to my life. It's painful when good things lead you into trouble. They were innocently following the master. It was their loyalty to Jesus that got them into that trouble. It was not rebellion. They were not rebels. He called on them. Look at, they were holding his hand to help him in ministry. And now they are in trouble. How do you respond when your sincere desire, when your love for God, it was your coming to church that landed you this trouble? There are battles you had no business fighting if you were not a serious Christian. But now that you've made up your mind that in this entire idol worshipping family, here comes a voice that will lift up the name of the Lord. Then a storm arises. If I understand when you go through tragedy because of lack of wisdom or carelessness or irresponsibility. That's fine. But what happens when storms arise because of truth? What happens when storms arise because of your commitment to God? Ask Joseph what led him to prison. Ask Jesus what led him to the cross. Ask the apostles what led them to prison. There are times that both the good and bad meet at the same place. In the prison cell, Joseph and the wine press are met at the same place. At the cross, both the criminals and Jesus. Be careful when you enter. There are times. Oh goodness. There are times that life will bring you to the same location where lazy people are. And you are wondering, what am I doing here? I'm a hard-working person. What am I doing here? I shouldn't be poor. I shouldn't go through this. I sincerely put money in a business hoping it will lift me. Now it's brought me to the same condition where lazy people are. Stop. Is God blessing us tonight? This is a word from the Lord to help you interpret the happenings in your life. It's embarrassing when you find yourself where you should not be. Joseph, what are you doing in the prison? Only criminals stay here. A man who has a covenant with God. The son of Jacob. What are you doing here? Jesus, you are the son of the living God. What are you doing naked on the tree? And he's silent. And Satan said, you would have bowed down to me. I gave you a chance. I bought that destiny. And you would have. I, I gave you an opportunity. I came to you and I said, bow to me. And I will give you the kingdoms of this world. It was your determination to get to the other side. You are so desperate to save men. You are so desperate to save them. You are willing to die. Now look at you. The Lamb of God. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God. That the princes of this world did not know. If Satan had known the drama that was happening in the cross. He would bring Jesus down from that cross. It was the storm that, let me tell you this, every time storms happen, look well, there is something God is doing. He's using those storms sometimes to shield you. It was the killing of the children that took Moses to the palace where he was trained to become a mighty person. If he was not hidden in the palace, he would have died. So on one hand, while it was Causing other people to die. Moses found his way. It was the hunger that came upon the entire world. That took Joseph and his brothers to Egypt. Where eventually they found refuge. Storms may look strange. But they have an advantage in them. They teach you lessons. Storms can give you stamina and power. So that what you were afraid of yesterday. You are not afraid of it tomorrow. Have you watched yourself go through, when you see this, you say, I know. You came in 2017, I cried. You will not see my tears again. There, 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 listen, there are times in life where you become so fortified. While you are greeting people, hallelujah, how are you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And someone says, sir, I hear that you just lost your job. I hear that your wife is sick. I hear that your car just spoiled. You say you are right. So why the joy? He said, I have learned by experience that every time storms come, I shouldn't focus on the storm. I should verify whether Jesus is in that boat. If he's in that boat, find rest. If he's in that boat, find rest. Are we blessed? Can I tell you this? 
There are messages that apply to certain people and doesn't apply to others. This is the message that in your lifetime, you must need this sermon. No matter how lazy or serious you are, you will need this sermon. Life will test you. Provided you are going to move to the other side, I give you a guarantee by the name of the Lord, storms will arise. It's true. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you shortly. But this is the truth. So I'm teaching you the dynamics of managing storms until you emerge victorious. He said, now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. So finally they get Jesus to wake up and he says, what's going on here? And he said, you better join us in managing this. We've exhausted our skills. Storms reveal the limitation of your power and your ability. You see, because the pride of men on the strength of their achievement, sometimes it takes storms to bring you back to your knees. Because you will not, many of us on the strength of your obvious achievements, it will, it will not be easy to allow Jesus to take the center stage. The disciples exhausted their options. If they had a solution, I assure you they would not wake Jesus. So there are times that God steps back to give you an opportunity to see how limited you are. So that it is that storm that brings you back. Remember you stopped praying when the promotion came. Remember you didn't have time for Bible study again. When your wife woke you, you said it's well. And something happened now that money could not solve. That intellect could not solve. And then you had to go back again and say, Jesus, I confess my weakness. I confess my limitations. Take your place. When Jesus arose, he said, now that you have acknowledged me, now that you have come to a point where you see that I am the master of the storm, that your peace is derived from me, he said, peace be still. This is the master speaking. It's amazing that 10 years captivity can come to an end the moment the master wakes up and says, peace be still. Can I tell you this? You know you are a Christian not just by the breakthroughs you are receiving. There are certain attributes the world cannot have. One of it is the peace of God. Not just peace with God, the peace of God. The hallmark of the benefits of your relationship with God is peace. The peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I live with you, not as the world gives. Peace. Be still. He rebuked the spirit. These spirits were watching. Let's stop Jesus. Let's stop all these people from getting to the other side. And Jesus gets up. There was a drama there. Most times we don't learn from the storm. We focus on the victory and what happened. And now I'm bringing you back. To, let's look at what happened in that storm. The humiliation of the flesh happened in that storm. I know by my strength, I am the best staff in this company. And when you read scriptures like, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It doesn't make sense on the strength of, I mean, your room is full of accolades, full of all kinds of things. And God says, this is not so. I do not come into your life as an addition. I come into your life as the, the life-giving factor. And so if you think I am an extra luggage you are carrying, I will step back with honor. I love you. My presence will still be there. But there is a condition for hearing my voice. The condition for hearing my voice is that you must be willing to keep quiet and draw back. The voice of God is expensive. Let me tell you this. The voice of God is expensive because when he does speak, no matter what stands before you, it must give way. So when he keeps quiet, he knows how easy it is to get that solution. He will not waste that situation. He silences because he's working on you. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone. It does not cost God anything. Prime, listen, people slept as prisoners and woke up the next day as prime ministers. When God speaks, things change. So when he's silent, discern the dealing that his silence is bringing in your life. His silence can mean work on your character. Where you are going will not require this version of you. You need to work on yourself. The promotion is true. You have seen it in dreams and visions. But this version of you cannot be exalted to that position. 
His silence can mean learn to acknowledge me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord, the Bible says, with all your heart. It says, and lean not on your own understanding. He knows you have understanding. He said, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, it says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, um, what, it says in verse, in verse 7, it says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There is the kind of wisdom that achievement brings to you. Read your Bible and see people who declared their rebellion against God. And they had results to show for it. God stepped back and their lives went down. And in that state, they acknowledged the God of heaven once again. Storms. The lessons that they teach. Because you see, there are levels when God leaves you without the training of the storm. It can destroy you. We are humans, so there are levels of honor. There are levels of, of, I prayed a prayer many years, ma, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, may I never know the full extent of my impact. I know that it can destroy. Just give me a token. Let me just know I'm blessing lives. I don't want to know how far. And God answered that prayer. Can I tell you this? For as long as you are human, wearing flesh and blood, the uploads of men will keep having an effect on you. And sometimes the miracle of storms bring your life back to balance. They remind you that you are human. They remind you that you need God. They remind you that your dominion is not absolute dominion. It's a derived dominion. Derived from a relationship. It reminds you that the, the central focus of your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. More than the destination you are going. It reminds you that if God does not wake up over your life, you will not arrive there. Even though you are seeing it already. Hallelujah. Let us go to the other side. And there was a training. They didn't know that they were enrolling in a school. A school of wisdom. A school of character. A school of power. They thought they entered a boat just to go to the other side. And Jesus said, join me. Guys, one day you will be my apostles. I will not be here. I need to mentor you and I need to train you. One time Jesus was speaking to the people, his disciples. And Peter began to talk to him about his not dying. Satan came to use the compassion of Peter. Satan does not use only evil. He can use good to destroy. He used Peter's compassion. Jesus, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus looks at him and says, Satan, get thee behind me. And Peter is saying, me? He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, here it is again, faith fails not. It says, and when you are strengthened, use this same formula. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. That means when you see them, look beyond what they are doing and discern what spirit is operating through them. Because sometimes the kindness of people can stop you from moving forward. They can love you too much to allow you pass through certain things. Their compassion can be used by the devil to stop you from rising. Your relatives can love you too much. They say, look, I, I can't stand seeing you go through this. So that you can discern that even though my well-meaning mother, my well-meaning father loves me so much, I love them so much, but this is not the voice of God. When you are strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. Are we together? Let me hurry up so we can pray. Now he rebukes the wind and the waves. And the Bible says there was perfect stillness. As soon as they get to gathering, they meet this madman waiting for them already. That was the spirit that was causing that storm. They meet this madman and Jesus looks at him and now they begin to negotiate. Do not send us out of this region. You have come to bring salvation. Keep us here. Jesus rebukes them. Watch what happened. As soon as Jesus rebuked them, they went and entered a swine and people lost their businesses, lost jobs, simply because Jesus arrived and certain spirits were dispelled. 
The man who was healed and delivered, the Bible says he single-handedly went to a Decapolis and brought people to Jesus. If they did not take the risks to move, do you know the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue? The same energy it takes to say, I'm tired of this business. God is speaking to someone. You are midway and you can look back and go back and feel honorable for a while. Or you can make up your mind, let them laugh while I move forward. Let them comment while I move forward. The miracle that storms bring in the life of believers. The Bible says, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, are we Bible students? Knowing this, that means let this knowledge give you stability. That the trying of your faith produces patience. And that let patience complete its work. I'm speaking to someone because in the midst of this conference, while everybody is laughing and jumping, you are crying. And say, oh Lord, let the, let the ministers that come to preach, let someone be able to discern what I'm going through and bring a word. In addition to this, it is true that you will laugh this year for sure, but discern what God is doing. His silence is not weakness. No, there is a lesson there. The last time he blessed you, you forgot him. You were so carried away by the accolades of men and he stood watching. And remember, the law is that in all your ways you acknowledge him. So his love and his mercy. Is it not in your Bible that he chastises those he loves? There is a formula. There is a non-negotiable condition for the making of great men. Among the training process is going through these storms. Not even Jesus was exempted from it. The way to the throne is the cross. Hallelujah. It is why Paul said, let no man trouble me. I didn't jump classes in the spirit. There is a scar that testifies that I passed through the training of the spirit. How do you become a compassionate giver when you do not know what it means to be in lack? Let me tell you how God trains us. Many times the area of your victory and strength will be your area of challenge. Where death ends is also where resurrection starts. They all start in the grave. Resurrection starts in the grave right there. God wants you to become a kingdom financier. I assure you, you will taste of what it means to be in lack. Even if you have money in your account, he will give you an instruction one day. He will not give you an instruction to sow the money they gave you free. He will not touch you. He will wait for the one you got as rewards for your business. That your emotions are connected to. Then he will say, sow it. And he will bind and cast that spirit and he will speak again. And ask you to sow it. And sometimes he can ask you to sow it over something you don't believe in. He's testing you. His last treasurer disappointed him. He will not take chances. If you want him to trust you, he will have to train you and build you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So while you are giving like a madman, you are wondering, everybody is looking at you and saying, I, I, I used to think that you are okay, but now I'm suspecting that something is happening. And you say, Lord, are you seeing them? He keeps quiet. There is a training. It's important for people to witness when you go through storms. Because they will be the ones to validate you. That you pass through correctly. Sometimes when God seems to embarrass you openly, rejoice. Because it's a track record. Tomorrow people will say, no way, you don't talk about this woman. She, she, it was not just a political position. I saw her walk through the pain. Lord, you seem so far. Joseph so much and quickly rescued him out of the well. He would have gone back home a victorious son, but never a prime minister. And the destiny of Egypt, there were spirits that were following that young boy. God, why does it look like I'm the black sheep in my family? No, you are not the black sheep. You are the one who has been marked. The realm of the spirit knows. They are watching you. Why is it that it was difficult for me to get to school? Why can't I have a normal life? I tell you this, great people do not have normal lives. It is true. So while you are in the well, 
rejoice in a dry well. Then you get to Potiphar's house. Rejoice. You find yourself in the prison and you are wondering what am I doing here? Only criminals come here. Why should the son of covenant be here? But it was in the prison that the miracle began to happen. If he ran away from the prison, he will also run away from the throne. Was it not at the backside of the mountain? Moses literally ran out of Egypt. And while he was at the backside of the mountain, tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro, suddenly he sees a bush that is burning and yet is not consumed. And he said, I will turn to see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. For where thou standest is holy ground. Be careful when complacency looks comfortable. Be careful when retreating looks better and cheaper and more convenient. Champions continue. It takes stamina in the spirit to continue. You are in school and you don't even know where your school fees will come from. And you are almost there. And the devil says you wasted your school fees. You would have started a business with it. And it looks nice. But while you cry and you are washing cars, your classmates look at you and laugh. And God is saying, I am training you how to serve. Because it is only servants who are on horses. It's a mystery. Most times... The area where you will be a blessing to men, that area, there are things that will pass, you will have to go through, it's called compassion. The ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. When you go through poverty and pain and lack, when you become a kingdom financier, you are emotionally connected to your assignment. I've gone through several things in my life as a man of God. Sometimes when you see me minister to people, there are times that I stand before people and there are imp possible situations I have to draw from the archive of my own experience when a family comes and says we need breakthrough if you are too innocent there is nothing to relate the power of God comes through the well of compassion there has to be something in your life that can touch you over that situation that is why most often than not when you come out of storms you don't come alone you come out with an anointing that delivers others too a woman who has been trusting God, for instance, for the fruit of the womb. I tell you, the day she gives birth, it's not only children that come out. It's an anointing. Any woman she prays for from that time will also receive that miracle. Are we blessed? I came tonight by the Spirit, lending my voice with your pastor and his wife to interpret to you the happenings in your life. That while men say there is a casting down, it teaches you to be wise. Do not call. Was it not because an angel spoke to Mary that she got into trouble? A virgin is minding her business, kept herself, kept herself from every man, was minding her business. Suddenly, angel, angels begin to hover around her vicinity and demons are also watching because they know angels don't roam around for nothing. What is happening around Mary's house? An angel suddenly appears and says, Woman, you are highly favored. Now, everything that happened to Mary, God calls it favor. Go and read your Bible and tell me if you like that kind of favor. We must learn to interpret the writings on the wall. From the day the angel said you are highly favored, she was in trouble. Suddenly, a woman who claims she's a virgin, you are seeing her stomach protruding. Imagine the Sanhedrin council, the parents say, look, just talk to us. We are still here. No matter what it is, we have. And what happened? Which rabbi? Joseph said, no way. I'm not, I mean, I mean, you know me. I've, I've labored here. I'm a carpenter. I mean, I'm a carpenter. I've been a diligent person. How do you explain yourself in the presence of such obvious evidence? Sometimes evidences are not the end of it. There is more that you see. You are standing with a protruded stomach and all the women are saying, shame on you. At least my own, I'm bad. Everybody knows I'm bad. You who claims you are good, look at this. And yet, God mandates that you keep quiet. Joseph looked at her and said, what have you done? Okay, 
I respect you and I'm a noble man. I will divorce you quietly. I will meet your father and say, give me back my dowry. I will quietly go. The angel said, no. Do you know what it means to come and meet people and say, I interacted with an angel and he said a ghost from heaven. Is, is dishonor in Africa? You are already in trouble and you gather elders and there. Instead of you to humble yourself and seek help, you are now bringing such a stupid explanation. A ghost, an angel appeared to me. And the elders will say, I told you, you, are, you people have irresponsible children. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm being graphic so that you will really know what Mary went through. It's easy to think, oh, she was just favored. That pain and that embarrassment in heaven's interpretation is called favor. that God can tell you you are highly favored and that means there is no more job and you go to God and say Lord what is this and he says favor because it is in your frustration you will come to church and sit close to your destiny helper usually if you had your salary you will not worship when they say worship but now there was no song yet you knelt down that's how serious your commitment was in church that day Joseph looks at a wine presser, I'm rounding up, and a baker. And he's able to show them compassion even in the prison. And now he says, please, when you go to the king, help me tell him I am innocent. I don't have access to the king, but I'm a sincere person. Then the wine presser goes to the king and enjoys his time and for two years leaves Joseph there. And then one day, ah! When it is time for God to shake himself and wake up. The thing about that, that story is that he woke up. Read your Bible. He said, let God arise. There are times that God is not only there. He wants to arise. That means he's not only ready to reveal his presence. He's ready to reveal his might, his power, and his voice. For someone, you have entered that season. Oh, you have entered that season where God is about to make a statement. Let me tell you this. When God speaks, every other voice is too late. He speaks in majesty. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb. Seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. And every ocean rolls. To the Lord our Lord. When God was ready to lift Joseph, he did it in a way. We're about to pray. I truly sense that this message is prophetic and is for someone in this place. Suddenly a king goes to sleep. Since no man could advocate for you, there is an advocate with the father, Jesus himself. There are times that your background does not have men who can speak for you. You trusted people who failed you. You said, please talk to the CEO. I am qualified. When they got there, they used your leverage to rise and forgot about you. Was it not Mordecai that saved the king? He saved the king and yet he was not rewarded. When God was ready to arise that night, Ahasuerus could not sleep. Notice that breakthrough has to do with waking up. Everybody who was responsible for bringing breakthrough had to wake up. God withdrew sleep including Jesus. Now Jesus wakes up and says, what is the problem? And they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? King Ahasuerus could not sleep. And he said, bring me the chronicles. They opened. There were many people who did good things, but he said, what has been done to this man? I believe that in this 2021, the book of remembrance is about to be opened for someone. I'm speaking to you prophetically by the spirit of grace. You helped somebody establish his business. 
you helped someone rise you gave an advice you prayed with a family you were praying and you were fasting with them it looks like god has forgotten you lord i am part of the growth and the lifting of so many people and yet the bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power and it looks like i've been forgotten but i speak to you there is a god who can arise and the book of remembrance was open and that night pharaoh went to bed and suddenly pharaoh had a dream and when pharaoh woke up god himself shut the heavens the wise men the astrologers the necromancers they tried to conjure spirits but the almighty was already awake can i tell you this when god wants to announce you he will shut every other door that can compete with you and put you in the presence of your destiny helpers i know how this god lives We are going to pray and I want someone who knows this song to be ready to sing for me. There is nothing you cannot do. That Yoruba song. You are mighty. Nathaniel Bassi's song. Because this is what is going to happen to someone in this place. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are in a season where God is helping you understand the storms in your life. They call you a black sheep. The Bible says there is this treasure that is in earthen vessels. Lord, I have been in Lagos for 10 years. All I have done is to serve you. All I have done is to be faithful. I have refused corruption, but it looks like there is no reward. Will my life be a negative testimony? I speak to you, the Almighty is about to rise. In this 2021, find strength. Find strength, David's Christian Center. Find strength, the keeper of Israel. He does not sleep, he does not slumber. Sing it for me, please, while we pray. a very prophetic atmosphere please give me volume once upon a time in my life please look at me I remember many many years ago I was invited for a meeting no man knew Joshua Selman then I remember praying to fast I fasted for three days preparing for that meeting when I was about to go for that meeting it was raining and the people, I knew the people were hungry to receive. It was a small gathering. They didn't have any money to give me. They didn't have any honor, no protocol, no nothing. And I said, Lord, I love you more than this. I got up, I prayed. And that was how I carried my Bible in that rain. I was walking and trekking to that meeting. Tears were coming out of my eyes and I was saying, Lord, I do this because I love you. I'm not looking for fame. I'm not looking for nothing. I just want Jesus to be glorified. When you pass through storms, it gives you compassion. Hear what I'm telling you. This is, some of you is after five years, you will look for this teaching. And with tears in your eyes, you will listen to it again. This is how the greater made in this kingdom. 
The way to the throne is the cross. Let me wrap up We're praying. All of a sudden, the king wakes up from his sleep. He gathers the wise men and they cannot give him an answer. And while that is happening, at the other side is a young man saying, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. You have told me to rejoice, but there is nothing to rejoice in. Ah! When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always, sometimes you do not know that you have five minutes left to come out of the storm. Five minutes left. Can I tell you this? Sincerely, I can tell you, five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not look like it. If Joseph knew that he was just a day left as a prisoner, suddenly the man says, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man I met in prison. Why he got there, I do not know. But this man interpreted my dream. And the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. King Ahasuerus said, who is in the chamber there? And Mordecai came and said, I'm the one. He said, what should be done to a man who has done this? Mordecai thought he was the one. So in his wicked heart, he gave the best option. He said, quickly, go and do that for Mordecai. I prophesy to someone, in the name of Jesus, may my God prepare a table for you in this season, in the presence of your enemies. I stand by the anointing of the Spirit. I decree and declare that in this season, God, who is the lifter of men, may he lift you in the name of Jesus. He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. I don't know where you get yours, but my help comes from the Lord, the maker. It is not only heaven and earth he makes, he can make men, he can make businessmen, he can make women of power. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord, lift me. This is the season of my lifting of laughter. I've gone through storms. You may be crying, but pray. You may be crying, but pray. minutes and we're done listen to me you are going to ask God for grace there are times God will not take the storm away Isaiah 43 please give it to us we're praying my spirit is fired up in this place Isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 but now say yet the Lord that created thee O Jacob he that formed thee O Israel fear not for I have redeemed you I have called thee by name he says you are mine verse 2 when you pass through waters not if when I will be with you not I will take the water away from you the most important thing is my presence there and through the rivers they shall not overflow you and when you walk through fire it shall not burn you neither shall the flames kindle upon you father grace to pass through lift your voice and pray there are families that are praying right now there are businesses that are praying right now i assure you that challenge will not see the end of you david's christian center pray in the name of jesus and christ of the living god
please look up. The next prayer point. Because for some of you, that season has ended. But the dynamics of your announcing is that God will have to create a scenario where he will introduce you in the presence of your helpers. Let me tell you this. When God wants to bless you, he will shut any other door that is an alternative to you and bring you before the great. It's true. This is how God lived. Suddenly, whoever would have been a worthy replacement for that period, God shuts that door and puts you in a position where only your gift can be seen and can be recognized. Are you ready to pray? Father, announce me in this season. It's not a carnal prayer. Announce me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Announce my business. Announce my family. Let it be noised abroad what God is doing in this assembly, in your life. Don't be tired of prayer. You came tonight for an encounter. Hallelujah. Now please look up. My God. Some of you are really crying in this place. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Joshua Selman, he said he did it in a way and a manner that we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. Verse 3. It says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. 4 says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south. Verse 5. They that sow, keep that scripture there. So while you are crying, you are sowing. You are sowing service. You are sowing honor. You are reading with the candle in the night and nobody knows you. No job and no nothing. You are writing the ideas. When God says go on a seven day drive fast, no one knows you. No one is placing a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When God is saying you will dress kings, you will be a fashion designer for kings. At that you don't, you always don't look like it until his grace exempts you. Sowing in tears. For someone, this is a prophetic word for you. Don't stop. In that one small room, keep sowing. You may cry, but keep sowing. Buy all the notebooks. Get pastor's tapes. Get pastor's books. Pray in tongues. While others are praying, keep crying, but pray. You may not have the money for all the meals you want, but pray. You may not have the options now, but pray. God told you that you will have a business that is global. Keep praying and preparing. As you spend money building your capacity, you may cry, but pray. The Bible says, day that sow in tears they shall reap in joy verse 6 the last verse he that goeth forth stop this verse is for those moving forward this verse is for those who intend to move forward it says he that goeth forth and in the process he weeps because the seeds that he is carrying is precious there is an assurance for you that you will return to the same place you cried understand what God is saying that a day will come you who has been called a rejected stone you will return back to that same house that same neighborhood this time around Moses does not return as a fearful person he returns as one who has met Elohim and he says Pharaoh this is not the same Moses who left when Moses, when Mary gave back to Jesus and the angels came, the Magi came, you can imagine the joy have been vindicated. Finally, when Jesus grew and they began to see the exploits, I could imagine the joy on Mary's face. I could imagine those who laughed at Mary saying, Mary, we are sorry. We were foolish and ignorant people. I assure you in your lifetime, 
for some of you the sun the moon and the 11 stars that laughed at you they will return back and bow to you and say when you were making that decision we did not discern Father, I'm standing here at David's Christian Center. A house you have so lifted, a house you have so honored. I have brought your word to your people. Father, scattered across this auditorium are people crying. People who have gone through and are going through storms on account of their desire to advance. There are people right now who may not even be able to understand what is happening in their lives. But Lord, we just sang that there is nothing you cannot do. I stretch my hands over your people, Lord God of heaven, and I pray that for everyone who has endured and continued, I stand by the God of heaven and I announce to you that in this season, go forward. In this season, go forward. According to Exodus chapter 14 from verse 13 to 15, I stand by the God of heaven and I declare to you that it is time for you to go forward. In your career, go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the Spirit that every tongue that rises up against you in this season, let it be judged for your sake. I prophesy Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 over your life. And I will give David's Christian center favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass in this 2021 that as ye go, provided you will go, if you will not go, there is no favor. But if you will go, I assure you, you will not go empty. This scripture is for those who have the courage to go. For as long as you have the courage to advance, to take that risk in righteousness, I declare you will not go empty. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every voice that has lied to you, that it will be as before. Master, we have tried all night. We tried it in 2019. We tried it in 2020. I bring you a prophetic word. Go back again. This time around with an anointing. This time around with an unction. Go back again. This time around with favor. This time around with faith. Go back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for your loved ones? In Africa, you are not free if you are the only one who is blessed. You have to pray that everybody around you is also blessed. It is always as for me and my house. I declare for your loved ones who are not here, but because you are standing here at Gravis Christian Center, I join my faith with that of Pastor Kingsley and his wife. And in the name of Jesus, as a threefold cord, we speak to you and to the families represented in this ministry and the families of those following online or whatever platform in the name of Jesus be blessed be blessed go forward advance gain strength achieve much in the spirit in the name of Jesus I pray finally for your prayer life you see no matter what else you gain if your spiritual life is down, you are really down. Let me pray for your prayer life and your word study life. For some of you last year, you had no time for God. You were busy here and there. But I declare in the name of Jesus, fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar. Passion for the word I release upon you. Passion for fellowship. Fellowship with the brethren. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? We continue to respect the government and the authorities around us. But as much as God grants room and opportunity for the gathering of the saints. And it does not violate any government policy. Sustain the courage to be in the gathering of believers. The church... 
is a strategy. The only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to ward off darkness on earth. The church is beyond the gathering of people. It's a, it's a platform and a strategy that was built with God's own intelligence. I will build my church. I decree and declare that no one in this church will be a victim of coronavirus. And if there are any of your family members who are currently suffering it now, we declare the life and power of Jesus over their bodies now. This church remains blessed. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.